In this video, I am going to explore the feature of UART of this Atmega microcontroller. And this works in full duplex manner, means at the same time, a device can send as well as it can receive the data. And it stands for Universal Synchronous Asynchronous Receiver and Transmitter. And this communication protocol supports both types of communication, synchronous as well as asynchronous. If you see the asynchronous communication, which is called UART, Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. So here only two lines are connected and this UART communication can happen between two devices over the two lines, TX and RX line. TX means transmit line, RX means receiver line. And since this is not a synchronous communication protocol, it doesn't share the common clock. This clock is not connected with the another device. Here both devices are running with their own internal clocks but the baud rate for both devices must be same if the first device is running with let's say 9600 baud rate then the another device also has to run at same baud rate of 9600 then only the another device can receive the data which was sent from the first device but in case of synchronous communication protocol it share a common clock here you can see this is a master and this is a slave device and similar like SPI communication protocol here the clock line is controlled by the master and that's what it makes different from the UART in UART there is no common clock but in case of UART to make it synchronous it uses a common clock now let's see its frame this is an UART frame here the communication will always start with a start bit in idle situation this line will be high and whenever the transmitter is trying to send a data first it will send a start bit and a start bit will always be zero then based on configuration it can send from 5 bit to 9 bits here it is sending 8 bits but we can configure it for minimum 5 bits and maximum 9 bits in a single packet and after sending this data bits based on configuration we can send parity bit for that and this parity bit can be either even parity or odd parity even parity means the number of ones will be even let's say here three ones were there so you have to add one extra one for even parity so that will make it four ones and for odd parity number of ones should be odd number so here it is three so that's why we have written zero over here so after this data bit we have to send the parity bit if configuration is enabled for that and to end the frame we need to send a stop bit for that the stop bit can be either one bit or two bit and it has to be always logic high the stop bit will always be logic high if you recall again in this UART communication there are three major things the device has to run with some baud rate so for that clock generation is required for the UART communication which is called baud rate here and the second thing we have here the transmit section where you can see this contains a shift register and from this shift register it sends one by one all the bits over this transmit line which will be received by the receiver at the rx line and all the transmitted serial data it will fill into this shift register again so it has three main things one is for clock generation and another is for transmit the data and third one we have for to receive the data in the block diagram you can see here these configuration we have to do with three control registers these are uart control and status register a uart control and status register b and third one we have uart control and status register c so with the help of these three control registers we can configure these for getting the desired baud rate to configure the transmitter and to configure the receiver so in clock generation you can see here we have a register called uart baud rate so we can directly update on this UART baud rate register UBRR UART baud rate register this is a 16 bit register high and low so based on this value it will generate the desired baud rate from this oscillator and for the transmitter first we have to write into the data register that is the transmit data register and once we write into this transmit data register 
this will be moved to the transmit shift register if it is empty if this one is empty the data whatever we write in this data register it will be moved to the shift register and upon this shift register what happens we have to add parity right so for the parity will be added if it is selected we can disable also if it is disabled directly it is coming here and transmitted over this transmit line right so if the parity bit is selected it will be added and then it will be transmitted over the tx line and that start and stop bit is added over here and similarly for receiver side whatever data is coming over this rx line from that it will identify first the start bit this clock recovery you can see here this is to identify the start bit means it is syncing the clock with whom with the transmitter and second thing once it identifies it has received the start bit it will start the data recovery whatever the 5 to 9 bits we have so it will recover that data and those data bits will be shifted to this receiver shift register and similarly parity check is also done and once all the bits is available here in receive shift register it will be moved to uart receive data register you might have confusion here let's proceed you will get this configuration how this configuration plays a role here in uart frame what we have we have first a start bit then based on configuration we can select the data bits from 5 bits to 9 bits 9 bits means 0 to 8 then parity we have to select and then a stop bit either we want to send one stop bit or two stop bit so the first thing is here we have to identify the start condition so to detect this start bit sampling is done for that and this is called the detection of this start bit is called clock recovery that means it is syncing the clock if transmitter is sending let's say with the baud rate 115200 and receiver is configured with 9600 if the both baud rates are different it will give error here itself so for that it does clock recovery so what happens here if you recall with this diagram so what happens when we set the baud rate for our device so whatever baud rate we had decided that is directly going to this receiver line correct but it is different for transmit clock the receiver clock is exactly same as if let's say you have configured 9600 so it will come and this receiver clock will be running at 9600 but for this transmit clock you can see here it is further divided by 2 here then it is divided by 4 here and further it is divided by 2 here so total if it is coming on this line it is dividing by 16 it is dividing this 9600 by 16 here and this u2x is for this is a configuration that we are doing with the control register with this we can increase the transmit clock if we are making it one that means we are doubling the transmit rate so it will remove this path and directly it will come here so it will divide only by it not by 16 and let's consider this one when it is dividing by 16 for normal mode when this double transmission speed is not selected so in that case it will be dividing by 16 so we can understand here like when single bit is transferred from this transmit line for that we can have 16 samples when it is double speed is not selected when this was zero for single bit which is transmitted over the transmit line we can have 16 samples at receiver line but if this is selected as one means we are selecting the double speed then it will divide by eight so for a single bit transfer on the transmit line total how much samples will be taken at receiver line total eight samples will be taken that you can see here when double speed was not selected you are taking how many samples you are taking total 16 samples for a single bit this is transmitted by the transmitter right which is coming to the rxt receiver line of receiver device so at receiver end total 16 samples will be taken and on the middle these three eighth ninth and tenth samples if it identifies any of the bits one it has to be practically zero because this line is zero and if it identifies any of these three samples is one it will treat this one as an error it will think like there was some spike came on between due to some error so it will reject that packet 
So all the three samples must be zero in this case. Similarly, for data recovery, the samples are taken and whatever it gets here, eighth, ninth, and tenth one. If the all are zero, then receiver will think this is a zero bit came from the transmitter. And if it is one, then receiver will understand there was one sent from the transmitter. And if it is a double speed, double speed was selected. When I'm saying double speed, this is for transmitter. So you can see for a single bit, total how many samples are taken? Total eight samples are taken. And these three middle samples are considered for the actual data. So that's how it does the data recovery. And same it does for parity also. Now let's see, how can we configure this UART? So there are mainly three control register, control register A, B, and C. So with these control register, we can configure our UART. So first for baud rate, there is a special register for this. So we can directly write whatever the baud rate we want to set. Let's say you want to set it. 9600 so that you can directly configure over here no problem and if you want to configure it for 115200 so that you can do and next one we have to configure for data bits how many data bits we want to transfer we can select from 5 to 9 data bits so for this we have configuration so these three bits are there in the control register so based on this we can configure to transfer from 5 to 9 bits as a data bits. These two bits are available in control register C, first and second bit. And this UART character size, second bit, UC SZ means U for UART, C for character, SZ for size. This is the zeroth bit, this is the first bit, this is the second bit. These two bits are available here. And this is the last bit is available in control registers B here, second bit. So that's how you can select the data bits for transferring the data. And this configuration must be same at both device, transmitter as well as receiver end. And for parity, you can either disable it or you can select even or odd parity for this. So based on these configuration bits, you are parity mode and two bits are there for this, which is available in control register C. At fourth and fifth place, these fourth and fifth bits are to select the parity mode. If it is 0, 0, then your parity is disabled. So by default, your parity will be disabled. So as you can see the initial value, it is 0, 0. And if it is 1, 0, that means you are selecting the even parity. And if it is 1, 1, you are selecting the odd parity. Then next one we have for stop bits. You can select either one stop bit or two stop bit. This is must. You have to select the stop bit. The start bit and stop bit must be there. So for a start bit, there is no configuration. It has to be always starts with logic low as a start bit and a stop bit is one. So either you can select one stop bit or two stop bit. So that configuration you can do with this bit. You are a stop bit select, which is available in this control register C only. The third bit you can see. So in this control register, first and second bits are there to select what the character size means how many data bits we want to transfer five to nine. And this one is to select the stop bit and these fourth and fifth bits are there to select the parity right and now we are left with here sixth and seventh bit we have not seen and zeroth bit we have not seen and for this you are type either it is a synchronous or asynchronous communication or we are selecting this as a master spi so that can be selected with the help of these two bits which is available in control register c itself so sixth and seventh bit you see here this is there for selecting the user type, what kind of communication we want to perform here, either asynchronous or synchronous communication or master SPI. I'll talk in detail about synchronous and master SPI in another video. And this one polarity, right? This polarity bit will be effective only when you select the synchronous communication protocol. In the synchronous communication protocol, your transmission will be done based on this polarity if the polarity is zero that means your transmission will be done on rising A's. on this A's, this is the rising A's. transmission will be done here and the reception will be done on next falling is so here the reception will be done so we have seen now the all configuration that we have to do so as a summary just see over all these control registers total we have three control registers user control and status register a b and c in a we have mainly a status over here, except these two bits, 0th and 1st bit. The first bit is for selecting the double transmission speed. 
that I had explained before. This one I will talk in detail in another session because this is a little complicated one. And from this second to seventh bit, this tells you the status of the transfer. The seventh bit will tell you data is received successfully or not that it will tell. So upon receiving the data successfully, this bit will be set to high means one. Similarly, if the transmit has completed, this bit will become one. And this fifth bit will be high when the data is moved from the data register to the shift register. So while transmitting, we are writing data to the UR data register and from there it is moved to shift registers for further transfer. So whenever data is moved from UR data register to the shift register, this bit will become one. And fourth bit shows you the status about frame error. If there is any frame error, let's say receiver has detected any bit wrongly. So this frame error bit will be enabled. And this is the third bit shows you the status for data overrun error. So consider while receiving the data, you have not read the data register and the next data has come. So in that case, this flag will be enabled means last data was lost. And this is for showing the parity error. If there is any parity error, this bit will become one. And in control register B, we can enable the interrupt for that. So for this Rx completion, when the data is received successfully, if you enable this, interrupt will be generated for that. Similarly, for transmit complete, if you enable this bit, the interrupt will be generated for that. And this is for whenever the data is moved from the UR data register and UR data register is empty now. So in that case, this interrupt will be enabled. And these two bits for enabling the receiver and this is for enabling the transmitter. And this second bit is there to select UR character size, how many bits we want to transfer that one. And these zero and first bit are the special bits. If you have selected total nine bits has to be transferred. And since you are transmit register and you are receive register, we are having only eight bits. So ninth bit will be present over here. So while transmitting, you have to write the ninth bit over here. And then you have to write the lower eight bits on the you are transmit data register and while receiving you have to receive this bit first and this is compulsory you have to receive this one first you are control register b and this first bit is the ninth bit of your data and lower eight bit will be on you are received data register and in control and a status register c sixth and seventh bit are there for selecting ur type what kind of ur type you are selecting either it is a asynchronous or synchronous or master SPI. So that will be selected by these two bits and parity will be selected by fourth and fifth bit. Either you are disabling the parity or you are selecting the even parity or odd parity. And third bit is to select a stop bit. Either you want to configure for one stop bit or two stop bit. And this is to select the data bits, how many data bits you want to transfer. Two bits here and one bit we have here. So these three bits select how many data bits you want to transfer from 5 to 9 and this is for selecting the polarity and it is only available in case of synchronous communication if it is zero that means you will be transferring over rising age and receiving over falling age and this is your data register 8 bits data register you have 8 bits for your data register for read and 8 bits you have for your data register for write that's all for this video. In this video, we have seen what is UART communication and what are the things we need to configure for this that all configuration thing we have understood in this video. In the next video, we'll write a program to do the same. We'll configure the UART for our 8 mega microcontroller, which will communicate to our host PC. So simple communication we'll do in next session. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned and I'll see you soon.